Matisse used to say that in order to be an artist, one had to learn to look at life with the eyes of a child, drawing one's strength from the existence of objects. Children naturally have a sense of wonder. They delight in the very being of things. A child at the seashore delights in the movement of the waves, the movement of the clouds across the sky the feel of the breeze, and the child feels all these things internally, within his own body. Indeed, the child is like that seashell which he holds to his ear to listen to the sound of the waves therein. He is a tiny, fragile creature into whom all the beauty and glory and energy of the world is poured. Unfortunately, as we grow older, we all too often lose the sense of wonder as we develop a more utilitarian approach to life. Yet there are times when, even as adults, we all typically experience the sense of wonder. In love, for instance, the lover delights in the very being of the beloved. Or, before some great spectacle of nature, a sunset, for example, or a visit to the ocean, Faced with the majesty and power of the elements, the sea, the sky, the vastness, we do tend to experience again that sense of wonder. Now suppose you wanted to preserve that sense of wonder, so you took a snapshot of the sea. And thus you are a great photographer, your snapshot probably fails to convey the scale the movement, the liveliness, the majesty, the power of the sea, which inspired that sense of wonder to begin with. But when the great master Gustave Courbet paints the sea, he does capture something of that majesty, that power, that living presence which arouses our sense of wonder. In this canvas representing the sea at Etretat, we see on the left an orange mass of rock with predominantly horizontal striations and beyond it, in the center of the canvas, a silvery mass of rock with vertical striations. A dagger of sand from the lower right corner pierces in between these two masses of rock. Meanwhile, a shadow moves in from the left and just nudges the edge of the dagger of sand. But that movement of the shadow nudging the sand is picked up by the boats in the lower right. The boats are strong shapes because of the contrast of their darkness against the surrounding light surface. Now these boats, with the grace notes of their shadows, swing upward to the right. We have then a fanning movement from the dagger of sand to the waves, to the horizon, and up to the clouds in the sky, up and up. And this fanning motion continues and leads our eye then back over to the left and to this dark mass of distance here. Some dark cliff, a tower, and a tree. That dark shape presses down upon the shape of the nearby cliff where we started. So we have a counterclockwise movement in depth and on the surface of the canvas. There is one part of the painting that would tend to resist this counterclockwise movement, and that is in the center. There is this tall, strong, emphatic vertical division between light and shadow on the silvery gray rock, right in the center. This is much like the center pole in the carousel. All around it, everything is turning. The force with which the space turns is so strong, however, that part of the rock splits off 
To me the painting resounds with a great cracking sound. If you go to Etretat in Normandy, you can see this rock. Many artists have painted it. But the genius of Courbet is to have painted it in such a way that we feel the configuration of the rock there as an event, as if it were splintering off from the main rock right before our eyes. Thus Courbet, in transforming his materials into his painting, transforms our vision, our sensibility, to make us more alert, more wakeful, more attentive to the act of existence. To tune into this painting, to truly see it, is to have that sense of wonder reborn in us.